So the presentation is the future of surgical training, accelerate human competency via prison, pre precision VR simulation with Richard Vincent. Perfect, thank you. Good afternoon. Somewhere I've got a clicker, there we go. Hope you're all well, thanks for coming. Um, <clears throat> thanks Tess for the introduction. Um, as Tess said, my name's Richard Vinson. I'm one of the co-founders of Fundamental VR. I've got two parts to um, this presentation. I'm gonna talk a little bit about surgical training and precision VR and how we use the, uh, the latter to influence the former. Uh, I'm also gonna talk about um, our platform and the software development kits that we launched yesterday so that we can give you a little bit of insight into that. So um, bear with me across the two sections of this. So let me, let me dig straight in. Um, so a quick bit of background on us uh, as a business. We've been in surgical training using immersive technology for eight years now. Uh, 2020, uh, 2015 we got going. Our platform Fundamental Surgery is now deployed across over 30 countries and this year we were proud to get the Frost & Sullivan Award for Innovation in VR Surgical uh, as the leading company in that space. Uh, team is uh, spread across uh, the US and the UK, uh, about 140 people developing the work that you'll see in a moment, uh, along with a massive medical education and surgical training and surgeon base to influence, inform and direct the way we take the technology forward. Our mission as a business is all about this. Quite simply, we want to accelerate human capacity and capability via precision simulation. And what do I mean by precision simulation? I mean taking all of the great things we know about immersion, and particularly for our use case, VR. So situational awareness, uh, spatial sound, presence, taking all of that, marrying it up with sophisticated haptics where the use cases require so that we can deliver true precision uh, capability and skills transfer with a view to getting towards our ultimate mission, which is all about what I call pre-human competence, which sounds a little bit scary, but it's not, trust me. It's um, the idea that I would rather a surgeon doesn't learn on me or you, but rather they learn on a simulation of me or you so that they come into the operating room, whether the first time as a resident or a fellow, uh, or for the thousandth time, can't even say it today, for the hundredth time um, as a fully tenured uh, surgeon in their specialism. Learning a new technique is hard. There's a lot to learn. There's a lot to understand. There's a whole bunch of processes. Then there's the skills, then the experience to build up. Pre-human competence is about delivering as much of that as possible in a safe, controllable environment so that the amazing people who deliver healthcare can do it and learn it safely and repeat it until they get to that capability, to that competence and that confidence that means we get better patient outcomes. We're not there yet, but we're working hard on it. Um, the example uh, image you see up here is actually from a, a gene therapy that's taught through our platform, which I think is probably our first example of true pre-human competence, where uh, the skills are required here and only here on the platform, and then highly qualified, very um, experienced surgeons go on to then deliver that experience inside the operating room uh, with their patients. This particular uh, gene therapy actually cures blindness, so it's quite stunning. And uh, again, the, uh, the surgeons who are conducting these procedures have done thousands of eye procedures. They probably never used this new gene te therapy technique until they're given the opportunity to, uh, to undertake it. High risk, high value, high impact. Pre-human competence is about getting them to the point where they can do it safely and then move into that operating room. So I'm gonna run this quick video, it's a minute long, uh, just covers a little bit about the platform and some of the applications.
So a few different examples of uh, the platform in use. Um, so many different applications, it's hard to cover it. And I won't bore you with all of it today. Um, key things really around the fundamental surgery platform and the way that we've put it together to deliver that surgical training capability is really around three key areas and the three you see in the middle of this, this chart. Um, completely hardware agnostic. You know, there's so many different great, fantastic pieces of hardware in immersive technology, both VR, XR, AR, MR, um, as well as haptic capabilities, whether that's, as you saw in that video, a glove, whether it's a grounded force feedback device, whether it's a device that has a real medical device attached to it. Because there's so many of those, we took the decision eight years ago to be completely agnostic and to deliver software that can port across those different capabilities so that, again, a surgeon can learn, and as the technology gets better, they can continue to learn with the same simulation just using that higher fidelity capabilities, whether it's visual, audio, uh, or haptic. So standalone is one part of our system, so the MetaQuest, the MetaPro, Pico, all those sort of things where you'll see fantastic capability in delivering procedural training, <clears throat> right? So, so going through the process of understanding all those steps. There might be 100 steps in a particular surgical procedure. Understanding those from different perspectives, a surgeon perspective, a nurse perspective, a sur surge tech perspective, allowing you to go through that process and rehearse again and again. Standalone VR is fantastic for that. Meet, meets the, uh, the user where they are, simple and easy to port and to carry around. If you want to go from the procedural knowledge to the capability and start to edge towards that idea of pre-human competence, well, you're going to need to get hands-on. And that's where our haptic VR system comes in. So everything we know about VR, plus the sense of touch, of weight, of, resi re uh, of resistance, of force feedback, of flow, all of those delivered through different haptic, inter, inter, uh, in, uh, different haptic engines. And the two together, of course, allows you to do both skills transfer through haptics and to have multiple people in multiple locations viewing through a standalone headset. So that's where our collaboration system comes in and just quite simply delivers multi-user capability, allowing people to meet wherever they are, from wherever they are, into collaborative learning spaces. All of that with a really robust educational engine around it. Third party content, there's a lot of medical education content has been created over the last 100 years. Let's not leave it behind. Let's bring it into VR where that makes sense. So we've been able to take that and, and bring that across. Um, and all of it, because it's hardware agnostic, completely future proofed for the new great hardware that's coming through and onto the market. And of course, because we measure everything, Telemetry, movement, actions, interactions, outcomes, decisions, knowledge base, all of that goes into a deep data dashboard that uh, allows you to monitor and track how individual skills are developing. So use cases, uh, real world use cases, just four examples of them here. Um, I mentioned a little bit about the first one on the far left as you look at it. This is Novartis. This is a gene therapy, cures blindness in children. Um, taught through the system. <clears throat> in the middle, you see uh, CMR, the robotics company. Uh, here, we're using robotics um, and different uh, interactions. And where our system comes in is it allows the teams to learn the setup of that particular robot, the Versius robot, within their virtual ORs before the robot ever appears within the physical OR. So it accelerates the learning curve into use. In Abiomed, um, here they have a groundbreaking um, heart pump, uh, impeller heart pump. Again, our system is used both as standalone and haptic to allow them to accelerate skills transfer both for the nursing staff in terms of how to monitor, use, react to the different changes that happen within the heart while the heart pump is in place, but also for the uh, physician and how they place and ensure that that's securely in, in the right area. And then the final example with uh, Houston Methodist, this is uh, something they call their Mightyverse. You can see where the name came from. Um, this is a mass participation learning environment where people can come together and study, 
They can interact with 3D models. They can bring up past training material that uh, Houston Methodist has available into different spaces, whether it's in an auditorium type environment like this or down to a one-to-one -one training space. Uh, again, all within this one Mightyverse area, taking advantage of our cl uh, collaboration technology. So all of that is a kind of overview of how we're approaching surgical training, how we're using immersive tech, and how we continue to push the envelope on that and the capabilities of the, uh, of the software and the hardware that's there. Of course, um, you know, hopefully it's come through. The platform for us is key, uh, because we know we can't possibly create all of the different surgical systems, uh, training capabilities, and, and use cases that are out there. So um, as a result of that, we've been working hard over the last few years to try and crystallize some of the expertise within that large team that we've built. Um, and as a result of that, we've been able to put together uh, a number of software development kits. And I'm really pleased to announce that as of yesterday, we're taking registrations now for what we're calling the fundamental core. This is a series of SDKs that leverage a number of elements of our platform that are freely available to uh, third-party developers to use, to explore, to trial, to use in whatever way they, they wish to, uh, to operate with them. Just to uh, show you a little bit about it, it's made up of five key components. Um, the core itself, which is a number of downloadable SDKs, currently for Unity, but uh, we will port across to Unreal in, in due course. Those Unity SDKs can be downloaded once you've registered with us. You can then use them, and I'll show you how some of the many features work within that core system. Um, alongside that is a developer portal to support all the questions that will uh, inevitably come up as people start to explore that, uh, as, along with a customer support system. Um, there's also a distribution and licensing system. We're very aware there's a lot of people out there making medical simulations already who perhaps don't have all the infrastructure uh, around user management, around data analytics, around security, around storage, and therefore we're offering within our core system the ability to simply take your simulation and attach it to the, the platform for distribution and, uh, and licensing. And the data dashboard that provides, again, the ability to manage users in, in different ways and understand how your simulations are being used. So let me, um, let me take you through a few key parts of that. Um, there are many, many features to the system. So I've just picked out three or four here to, uh, to highlight. The first one is we've called Brand Builder. Um, it's a set of prefabricated operating rooms that you can rebrand, manipulate, tweak, adjust as you wish so that they represent and reflect the experience that you're trying to, uh, to create within that area. Really simple drag and drop uh, interfaces that mean you can stand up an operating room within minutes if you take it as it is, or you can use our basic system to then adapt and adjust it into the areas that you want it. Comes with a whole set of prefabricated furniture that again, you can choose how and where that's placed within that environment. The second one is a user interface template. UI is a kind of key, key thing to get right. And I think that we've spent a lot of time trying to, uh, to navigate that. I wouldn't say we've got it all right, but we've certainly tried hard. Um, we've taken the best of what we've created and put it into a UI interface, which again means that if you need a pop-up risk menu, you need a, a, a screen menu, you need a representation, a different login system, you'll find templates for all of those within the fundamental core. Multi-user, I talked about collaboration and how important this is. I don't think we have a single use case now where we don't have multi-user in place within the platform. So with that in mind, we've released, again, an out-of-the-box multi-user system encompassing avatars, um, uh, room creation, security within those rooms, uh, monitoring and, and uh, interaction, all of that networking technology that you need so that you can enable a multi-user system within a training environment with a click of a button. Those who've tried to work with that networking technology will know what a significant acceleration that can be uh, for, for development going forward. 
All of it's really simple, simple to build, simple to interact with, all of it built with educational modules. Again, we've spent the last eight years working out how you break down a procedure against different surgical objectives, against different learning outcomes. We've packaged up a number of those pieces and put them into the fundamental core. So again, you can open up one of those modules, see immediately the, uh, the structure that we've created, and then build and adjust around that. And we hope that these will be useful to, again, get quickly into a full build. The assessment modules, um, again, out of the box, uh, basic stuff like time and interaction, of course, but they're much more complex stuff like which elements of the, uh, the uh, different um, simulation you want to monitor effectiveness around. Uh, that could be right down to angles of approach, success against a particular surgical objective, all of it there to allow you to just immediately get that insight going. Um, again, having had many of these created, uh, I know how significant that work can be. So we hope that this will be a, a first step towards giving the tools to really bring that to life. And then one I'm really excited about, I think haptics are have a major play in the VR space when it comes to surgical training. So we've taken some of our haptic engine uh, we've been building a haptic intelligence engine, a hardware agnostic one for the last eight years. Um, we've taken elements of it so that you can create out of the box haptic interactions with different uh, anatomy, different um, use cases, without having to work out all the physics that goes around that. Um, I've watched my team, I can't do it myself, sadly, um, but I've watched my team go from um, using the traditional ways of doing this and spending days and weeks working out a haptic interaction that is reliable and, and effective down to minutes using this system. So really excited to see that there. And then the final one I mentioned already, but as I said, there's a number of players out there already creating fantastic different use cases for uh, VR simulation within the healthcare space. If you don't have the user management system, you don't have the security system, you don't have the data analytics system, or the ways of monetizing around that, our distribution system within the fundamental core could potentially be the answer for that uh, and save you from having to build all of that infrastructure. So again, we've made that part of the, the system that we're, we're making available um, within fundamental core. So, oops, that's not working. Here's a quick video that just brings a little bit of that to life. and lots in there. Um, the, uh, from our main website, Fundamental Surgery, you'll find a link to Fundamental Core. Um, it's in the platform button, or you can go straight to fundamentalcore.com. Um, registration is now live. If people want, are interested in getting involved in it, you can also download a, a set of literature and, uh, and more technical information. Um, I thought that would come up. The SDKs that are Fundamental Core are free. Um, we are putting a registration fee in, mainly as a gating exercise. Um, for anybody who registers off the back of AWE, we'll get rid of that registration fee. So if you register in the next couple of days off the back of a, uh, AWE, you'll see the, the system there. We'll give you a code that means you can bypass that, uh, 
that gating $99 registration fee. The license fee then, um, in terms of where you pay for it, is actually when you commercialize. So you can build all you like. Uh, you can run that as you wish with some test accounts. When you want to monetize and commercialize that product, that's where we then look to take a, uh, a license fee. So, uh, and again, that's all documented uh, within the system. Um, it, it reduces in size um, based on the volume that you're looking to use. So as I said, registration's open now. Um, if you're interested, go to fundamental-com, sorry, core.com, um, or easier, fundamentalsurgery.com, and you'll find a link straight from there. Um, it's just an email and, uh, and your name, and then we'll get back to you. We will release the downloadable versions of these on July 1. So we're going into a 30-day registration period whilst we tool up all the support packages, and then they'll be freely, freely available from that point onwards. So I hope if there's developers in the room, uh, you'll be interested to use that. And um, thank you for your attention. Uh, again, you'll find everything on the website, but appreciate you uh, coming by. I think we've got some quest time for questions. So if you have questions, please come up here. You only thank you um, to Vincent. And if you want to come up here and ask a question, we have about two minutes. Hello. I have a question about your haptic solutions. You said you explored a wide range of hardware, and you also mentioned that it was uh, important for skills translation. So I wanted to know what, hard, what parts of haptics are the most important that you've noticed through building out all these modules for all these various companies, what's most important for that skills transfer, and what form of haptic hardware did you have the most success with? So within the, um, within the SDK, we only support one piece of hardware so far. We'll broaden out beyond that, so it's the um, uh, 3DS um, touch system. In terms of what's the most important haptic interaction for surgical, impossible one to ask, uh, answer, I'm afraid. It, it, it's kind of how long's a piece of string. There are, of course, different things. The key thing here is about having a haptic interaction that gives you the physical cue that's relevant to the learning objective. That's where we've really focused. You know, people feel things differently. So our body of surgeons will assess the different um, haptic interactions that we've built and we'll get to the point where we say, okay, that's as close as we can get to real world and it does the job that we need it to do. Next person might pop up and say, that's not how I feel it. And the truth is you do feel things differently, but we need to make sure that haptics are effective for the skills transfer. That's where we've really focused our attention. Thank you. Pleasure. All right, thank you. Thank you, everyone.